This video is one that I've been wanting to do for quite a while, but I've been kind of avoiding it because of how tongue-tied I get and how confusing the actual subject matter is. So today I'm gonna to be talking about North American rat snakes. I'm going to do my best to go through all of the different ones that we commonly know them as, and as best as I can discern their actual different speciation. North American rat snakes are very difficult to classify as far as taxonomy goes. If you guys all watched my, you know, Texas slash Western rat snake video, you saw me kind of struggle a little bit and I got a little bit of criticism, somewhat deserved because I fumbled over that and it seemed like the information was all over the place. And a part of that is because I was trying to tell a little bit of like the history and all the different classifications that Western slash Texas, because they're the same type of rat snake, basically, that they have all been classified as and it got very confusing. So today joining me in person is our scaleless Texas Western rat snake. And I'm going to go through and do my best to keep it concise and clear enough of all of the different basic species of rat snakes that we know in the hobby. There are some different subspecies and some different locales. I'm not gonna get too much into specifics of that. And I'm probably gonna fumble a little bit over this. So if it's a little choppy, I do apologize, but I'm gonna do my best on this one to talk about what is in all honesty, probably the most underrated type of snake that we have in the reptile hobby. So to start things off with, it's not gonna be her, but I will get to her in a second. We're gonna start with the, probably the largest species of rat snake found in North America. And that is the black rat. So all of, almost all of the rat snakes that I'll be talking about in this video are all part of the genus Pantheropus. And that consists of a lot of those. And you've probably heard that name, including corn snakes. But Pantheropus obsoletus are the black rats. But there are some other ones, and I'm not going to get too much into that. So we're just going to stick with obsoletus. Those are the black rat snakes. These guys can get huge. We're talking close to eight feet long sometimes. They get their name from a pretty obvious reason is that the adult black rat is almost solid black. They usually have a little bit of a white, whitish yellow underbelly, even onto like the under part of their lip, like that you can see on her right there. Otherwise, they are sometimes almost solid black. They are the furthest east and the furthest north species of rat snake in the United States. Essentially, they range from parts of New York all the way down south, all of the eastern part of the United States into parts of southern uh, South Carolina and Georgia. They are known by a lot of other snake, a lot of the net, uh -huh. see, there you go. They are known by a lot of other colloquial names like the chicken snake and black snake and black racer and giant black racer and just black snake, but they are the black rat snake. They're a really cool species. There are several different morphs out there. And honestly, the one that a couple of people have asked for me to do a video of, I just haven't done yet because I don't have one, but I want to get a calico black rat snake because that's really cool. One of the different morphs, I'm excited to, you know, eventually get my hands on one. They're really cool. They do go through a bit of an autogenetic change in a lot of the rat snakes that I'm going to talk about on this video do. A lot of them look very similar. They're kind of like a gray model color. And then as they get older, they do change quite a bit. The black rats being one of the more dynamic examples of that. Next up, we have yellow rat snakes. Now, these guys get their name for a pretty obvious reason. They're usually a yellowish color, although they can be kind of greenish with a little bit of like an orange hue sometimes. These guys are found in like the very southeast part of the United States, mostly in Florida, but along a good part of the southeastern coast. Um, they look very similar to a lot of other young rat snakes, but as adults, they all have that usually yellowish with a little bit of, you know, green, yellow, and uh, yellow, orange in there with nice dark stripes that run the dorsal part of the body. They can get close to the size of the black rats, but they usually average a little bit smaller, usually maxing out around seven feet. Um, a good part of that usually is the further north the snakes usually are, they end up being a little bit bigger and a little bit darker, um, just because the bigger size helps them retain heat and the darker color helps them absorb more UVB because the further south you get close to the equator, more UVB, so darker black, um, black rats, and then the yellow rats. The yellow rats are generally considered part of the eastern rat group or family, although currently their taxonomy is part of obsoleta, which is part of the black rats, but they're not eastern rats. And this is why 
it gets very confusing. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that because I'll end up confusing myself as well as all of you. So yellow rats, they are distinctive enough. They're a really cool species. And you know, the rat snakes, in general, most of the rat snakes have that, you know, kind of rah attitude, but I think they're really cool. The next one are the gray rat snakes. And honestly, I would like to get a good like pair or trio of a lot of these different species, but the gray rats are on a little bit higher priority for me as well. The gray rats are as varied as their habitat and range. So the gray rats are one of the more abundant ranging species of all of the North American rat snakes. They can be found as far north as Southern Canada. And I know I, I usually mess that up, but as far north as Southern Canada, and then as far east as a lot of the coastal states, and it takes up a good part of the Midwest. It usually doesn't get as far south as like Alabama, Mississippi, and Florida, but a good part of the Midwest and it does occupy a lot of the coastal states along the way as well. And I say varied as their range. So, you know, that's a huge amount of area that all of that range varies quite a bit. They can be found in woodlands and grasslands and savannas and farmlands and urban areas. And then as far as their actual look goes, they can be almost as dark as black rats in a part of the range where it overlaps with the black rat snakes. They're confused quite a bit. And I mean, for all we know in captivity, there's probably quite a bit of crossover. And then they can be as light as almost white with gray markings. And that phase is called the white oak phase. And honestly, that's what I would like. I would love to have a trio of two white oaks and one very dark animal to get a little bit of like blood diversity in there for that really cool group. Um, they are just a really cool species. They don't get as large usually as the blacks and a lot of the Easterns. They're usually, they're more in that like five-ish foot range. They're a really cool snake and actually baby gray rats generally end up looking the most like their adults as they, a lot of, as I said before, a lot of the baby rat snakes look very similar the gray rats can end up looking very close to what they look like as babies, as adults, you know, excluding the times when they get very white, the white oaks and very dark, um, and usually part of the northern parts of their range. We're finally going to talk about this school right here. So this is a western slash Texas rat snake. So for a very long time, Texas rat snakes were considered their own thing, um, but are now considered part of the western rat snakes or the obsoletus, which if you're paying attention, that is also part of the black rat snakes. And, you know, very confusing how a black rat can be the furthest northeastern species, but be related to ones that are in Texas and not found further east than that. Um, but with that being said, that's why I said it's really confusing. These guys are probably the most well-known species of rat snake, excluding the one that I'm going to be talking about in just a second. Um, these guys are one of the larger ones. They frequently hit that five and a half to six foot plus range and they have usually an attitude to match. These are the most iconic, the angry little noodle with like the stick arms that you see them going, ah, that is their defense mechanism. Again, with most snakes, it is to take off, but the, as a whole, the Western Texas slash Texas rat snakes, and I'm going to keep doing that because colloquially that's what they called and have been called for a long time. So I catch myself a lot. Um, have that feisty attitude. These guys occupy a huge range. They're obviously found in Texas, but they are found as far north as the Great Lakes, occupying much of the center of the United States. Um, there is a huge degree of variation. Sometimes the Texas varieties have specific coloration that refer to them versus other Western rat snakes. Um, I mean, even in parts of Texas, I have seen uh, breakdowns of the different color phases. Although a lot of those color phases can also be found in parts of the Midwest, like in Ohio. So Western rat snakes, they're really cool. They have quite a few different uh, varieties of morphs. The two probably most common are the scaleless right here, this girl, and the leucistic, which has a crazy history that I will hopefully get into another time. Um, but the leucistic Texas, oops, sorry, little girl, the leucistic Texas rat snake, which we also have one of, but he's a jerk. And I don't feel like getting bit on camera, but they're a really cool species of snake underrated but again a little bit larger of a snake with a little bit more of a grumpy attitude next is the everglades rat snake so the everglades rat snake obviously gets its name it's found in usually the very southern part of the part of florida and into the florida keys um everglades obviously that's where they get the name from they are a yellowish orange color they look very similar to the yellow rats they're usually a little bit smaller usually a little bit more orange they usually have those 
nice solid three stripes, also similar to the yellow rats. Um, as I said before, they're a little bit smaller, still kind of the same attitude, usually the same still care. Um, it's This is one of the ones that also gets very confusing because, you know, they're an Eastern rat snake, but they are usually and most recently classified in the obsoletus, which is part of the Western and black rats, not part of the uh, yellow rats and other Eastern rats. So it gets confusing like that. But the Everglade rat snakes are distinguished enough from other obsoletus as even and even the yellow rat snakes they're really cool i like everglades rats probably more than the yellow rats just because i really like those bright oranges and reds versus more of like the yellow color but not really a fan of yellow most of the time this is arguably the most common and well-known and popular pet snake in general across the world and that is the red rat snake or corn snake so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on these guys. Everyone knows corn snakes. Um, they do have a really cool and interesting history and one day maybe I'll be able to talk to um, like Kathy Love or somebody about the crazy history of corn snakes. Um, but for a long time they were called red rats before they were called corn, um, you know, from like their cool belly pattern. I don't have a large corn snake anymore um, to show you guys, but all mine are little babies and most of them are in quarantine. So I can't really show you any in person, but we all know about corn snakes. You know, the plenty of morph combinations as well as quite a few different localities like Abbott's Okatee and Miami and Everglades and all that really cool stuff. They're found in the southeastern part of the United States, basically east of the Mississippi, south of, mm, I, it gets a little into there, but theoretically even as far north as New Jersey, but mostly in the southeastern part like Georgia, North Carolina, um, and Florida. Next is Colorado's very own uh, resident rat snake, and that is the Emery rat snake, or the Great Plains rat snake. Um, these guys were considered part of basically every other type of centrally arranged rat snake throughout history, but they've been their own species for quite some time. Um, they are very closely, they look very similar to corn snakes, um, but as a whole, they're usually a little bit more heavy bodied. They're almost always much more dark, even to some of the darker corn snake phases, as well as they are much more hardier and able to, you know, survive the more temperate and seasonal changes that comes with the central part of their range. So basically these guys exist the Great Plains. So all of basically central United States, you know, from the southern parts of the northern states all the way down through, you know, parts of Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, Ohio, all the way down even into parts of northern Mexico. Um, they're a really cool species. We can't really have them here in Colorado, obviously, because they're a native species. But um, the Emery or Emery rat snake, there is a little bit of color variation depending on where they are found throughout the range. But as a whole, they're a fairly basic looking rat snake. They look very similar to their uh, juvenile phase as well as a lot of other the juvenile rat snakes that kind of grayish brown mottled color with the black uh, banding on the top of them I shouldn't say banding more uh, blotches on them these rat snakes are really cool and honestly I would love to get a pair of each and these are the fox snakes so in fox snakes there are essentially two different subspecies the Easterns and the Westerns and there is a little bit of a difference. The Westerns are usually a bit more heavy bodied, sometimes a little bit more darker. Um, and then the Easterns are much more widespread. So the fox snakes are really cool. They get their name from the pungent musk that they have. Supposedly smells very similar to fox urine because you know, if anyone has ever been around foxes at a zoo or if you're in the country, it's very pungent. It's a very distinctive smell. And supposedly, even though I've, I've only ever actually handled like a couple in my life, but I've never smelt it, but I have smelled foxes, so I don't really know. Um, but so the Westerns are a little bit more concentrated in their range. There are a lot of, they're usually found really close, like near like the Great Lakes and areas in the States in the United States near that. The Easterns are more widespread, um, essentially going from the Mississippi East, even into parts where you would find like corn snakes. Um, and that's essentially what divides the Easterns or the Westerns or the Mississippi. Although they have done quite a few surveys recently and they have found what are distinctly supposedly Easterns found miles west of the Mississippi. So not necessarily a physical 
break that distinguishes them. Again, it's, you know, that the stupid taxonomy thing. Like, some people think they should just be called the northern rat snakes and just a single species and just, like, variations of locality. Um, which, honestly, I think that'd be kind of cool. So you have, like, the northern one. That's where the fox snakes are called. But whatever. That being said, um, I think they are a really cool snake. There's something about them that's a little bit different than a lot of the other like rat snakes they're almost like this weird cross between a rat snake and like a pitch wolf it's like a pine or a bull snake which is really cool i think they're a really 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 cool snake species and again this is one of the ones that i kind of want to put a little bit higher priority on new species that i'm acquiring and i keep saying that i'm not going to get tons and tons of new species but i could do quite a few uh North American rat snakes, they're really cool. And I think fox snakes, a pair of each, Easterns and Westerns would be really, really cool. This next one is one that I don't think too many people have heard of, but if you are into rat snakes, you're gonna be really excited for me to bring this one up. And that is the Baird's rat snake. So this one is, we're now venturing closer into what are more like the desert rat snakes. This is still part of like the Pantheropus genus. Baird's rat snakes are really cool. They're found in Southwestern Texas. They're a moderately sized one in that, like, you know, again, that four to five foot-ish range. Um, and they are probably one of the ones that go through one of the more distinctive oxygenetic changes. And you've heard me throw that around in this video. So they look very similar to a lot of other baby rat snakes. Like they look like a baby gray, baby black rat snake, that kind of grayish mottled color, sometimes with a little bit more speckling. And as they get older, they kind of turn this peachy orange hue color, and then it'll fade into like a light to dark gray color. They look beautiful. And there's even a hypo of them that occurs naturally that give them an even more dynamic look. They are so, so cool. Um, they're one of the ones that if you're going out herping, there are a lot of lifers for a lot of people. Um, not nearly as hard to find as like, say like Alterna King snakes, the gray bands, but they are really cool. Um, you know, they're a desert species. So you have to go out in the middle of the desert, the middle of Southwest Texas, um, you know, at the end of the day at night to go out and find them because in the middle of the hot Texas sun, they're not gonna be out in the middle of the day looking for them. Really cool species. I would like to get a pair. I mean, I give them this, I'm gonna say that about pretty much every single one of the animals on this list. I don't have a whole lot of them. You know, these guys, corns, and then uh, one more on the list that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. So essentially with those, um, that kind of concludes for the most part, most of like the regular ones that we think of rat snakes, like the Westerns, the Texas, the corns, that's kind of it for those. And as we move on to other ones, we get into different genuses and ones that are a little bit different, but honestly are more my favorite and one that I do actually have. So this is the first of the true desert rat snakes. This is the Transpecos rat snake. So this is a really cool species of snake. I first saw these guys on Instagram posts of a specific one that is the Azanthic. Um, they have a couple different uh, morphs and phases. They have a blonde and an Azanthic. And these guys are so cool. They are this silver. So these guys are found out in Southwest Texas. Um, they're very hard to find, um, very corpuscular, very remote, along with the gray bands, with the bairds. Um, it's, they're very difficult to find. They're lifers. Um, they're just a really cool species. They don't get very large you know, about four-ish feet long, but that really cool silvery gray color with very distinctive dark, bold ladder pattern that essentially goes down their whole back. And they have very large, prominent silver eyes. They're not like bugged out, although on babies, they are a little buggy and it takes them a couple years to kind of grow into them, but they are a really cool species of snake. I have a single male. He is um, het for both. He's a het, he's 100% het for azanthic, possible het for blonde. Although I might have flipped that around. I'd have to go, I need to go check my records. But he's a really cool dude. Uh, I very look forward to getting a girlfriend for him in the future. They're just such cool, cool little snakes. Um, you know, they don't, they need a, a, a decent warm spot, but you know, they're fairly corpuscular, so they don't need a whole lot of like blazing hot sun. Um, just kind of keep them like you would, like a, like a desert king snake or a California king snake. They work pretty well and they are just a cool little snake. This next one is probably the one that you will hear about least, and that is the Baja rat. And they are found, does anyone want to take a guess? Going once, going twice? Yeah, Baja, California. Um, although there have been one or two unconfirmed sightings of them on mainland, like on California, outside of the peninsula, across the across uh, the Sea of Cortez, or the, ba the ba Cape, whatever, across 
across the water. I'm totally spaced on that. That's not the important part of the video. Um, these guys are another desert rat. They're a little bit smaller than the Tech Transpecos. Um, they're also one of the ones that have the most uniform color, other than, you know, like a leucistic Texas or something like that. They're kind of a creamish gray green color, um, but it's almost uniformly that color. And then there's sometimes a little bit of like white speckling around the front of them. Um, they're like the other desert rat snakes, like the Bairds, especially like the Transpecos rats. They're closer to what would be considered almost a true nocturnal species. They're, I don't think they've ever actually been found during the day. They're almost always found at dusk or at night. Um, they have been found eating bats. Um, there's a lot of caves down in the, uh, in Baja and they have been found eating bats and that's where they'll actually be found. So when they're, during the day, when they're looking for these guys, that's where they would be found in the caves. And then at night, they would probably move from deeper in the cave system a little bit further out and eating the bats on their way in and out uh, of their nightly hunts. They are a really cool species of snake. I, I can't, I don't know if there's anyone really working with them. Uh, maybe Stampede up in Canada. He, they work with a lot of really cool different colubrids. They might be working with them. I don't know too much about them, to be completely honest with you, but they're a really cool species that gets overlooked probably the most of any of the rat snakes. We're winding down now, so only a couple more left, I promise. This next one is arguably the rarest rat snake found in the United States, and probably the rarest one on this whole list, and that is the green rat snake. So we're not talking about the red-tailed greens, the Asian, the old world ones, the super big ones that, um, there's another really, there's another YouTuber that, ha that keeps them very well, um, and they're really popular because of them, but this is the green rat snake. This is a North American rat snake, um, it's not as much a desert rat snake as, say, the Transpecos or the Baja. They are found mostly in Mexico, and there is a very small population in southern Arizona. This is arguably, when it comes to people who herp in the southwestern United States, the Everest of herps. Like, everyone has the hard time finding the gray bands, the Transpecos, things like that, but the green rat snakes are so hard to find in the United States it is insane when they're actually able to be found. They are one of the longer species as far as the southern ones go. Um, they can exceed five feet, most usually top out at three and a half to four, like the Transpecos. Um, they get their name for a pretty obvious reason. They're that kind of olive greenish color, and then they usually have a little bit of like a yellow bit of underbelly. Um, sometimes there can be a small amount of speckling, but they're usually uniformly that olive green color with that lighter underbelly. Um, they're not really found in as rocky desert as you would see the other ones, like I mentioned before. Um, they're more found in close to like evergreen forests, which is why they're so hard to find in southern Arizona. It's almost all hot, high desert, um, but there is a small little bit where it is a little bit more non-deciduous forest, and that is where they can be found most of the time. Um, but in, in Arizona, it's still a little bit rocky, a little bit desert. It's still really hot, um, very, very nocturnal. I don't know if they've ever been found during the day, just like the Baja. These guys are really cool, and I do know of a couple people who work with them. Um, I'd have to look it up to exactly see who it is, but there are a couple people who do work with the green rats. They're a really cool species of snake that a lot of people don't even really know exist, um, although there's probably a lot of animals on this list a lot of people didn't know exist. But the next one on the list is arguably my favorite rat snake, we'll see. And I very much look forward to getting some of those in my collection very soon. All right, last on the list. Um, this is arguably one of my favorite ones of the North American rat snakes. And I can't say for sure because I don't have one yet. Um, I would say that the number one is the, um, the sub -oc, the Transpecos rat snake. Um, and I did a whole species spotlight about them. I'll try to remember to put the link right here. But this one has several different names. So this one has been known as the Mexican night snake, the Mexican night rat snake, and the red yellow rat snake. Um, oh, are you, are you tuning in to me? Sorry about that. Um, their genus is called Pseudolaphae. So Alaphae is for a long time the genus of most rat snakes. And then a while ago, they kind of separated them out with Alaphae being the old world Asian rat snakes and Pantherophis being the new world rat snakes like this girl and corn snakes. Um, the Pseudolaphae, Essentially, pseudo, if anybody knows a little bit of grammar, essentially means um, similar or fake or close to. 
So it's a bit of an outlier as far as North American rat snakes go. These guys are really cool. Um, you know, from outside or looking in, you would say, oh, that just looks like a, like a bug-eyed rat snake, right? Well, it's not quite. So these guys are obviously found mostly in Mexico. Um, there are a couple different species of them, and I think one of them can range into what would be considered more Central America, uh, but mostly found in Mexico. They are very nocturnal. This is probably the most nocturnal of them. And when you look at the shape of its eyes, you can tell why they're very large. They are great for absorbing that light and seeing in the dark. As these guys are really cool. They have that kind of really cool red coloration, um, although they can be kind of brown and yellow with really cool like yellow banding on them, um, as well as they even have a naturally occurring aneurytheristic phase. Like that's a phase that just exists in nature all the time throughout their range. It's kind of that grayish white instead of the red, uh, brown, and yellow. They're a really cool species of snake. They're a little bit longer body in that four-ish to five foot long range, similar to a corn snake. They're a little bit more slender bodied. And again, um, the big eyes, they have been seen and observed eating bats. They have been seen eating rodents. Uh, they haven't been researched as much as most of the other species of snake on this list in general. Because again, very nocturnal, they're harder to find as well as there's not as many Mexican species that have been studied as extensively as North American species um, because we have a bunch of nerds here in the US that prioritize that, which is why if you guys haven't figured out the common theme of this is nobody can decide what things are, um, which kind of essentially concludes uh, this little list. So those are basically all of the different North American rat snakes and I tried my best not to dabble in too much into the crazy taxonomy and changes, but a lot of that, especially in the hobby, becomes an issue because a lot of these that we have um, before like native laws throughout the different states um, all got enacted, people were just collecting animals and calling them things. And if you look at the range, especially of like the grays and like the gray rats and the black rats, where they can look almost identical in parts of the ranges, we don't know which one's which. And so a lot of them are just kind of mixes and mutts. And they're, you know, I mentioned that the black rats are the same as the Westerns and the Texas, but not the same as the Easterns, even though they're found all of that. So all of it, taxonomy is kind of bull a little bit. So that's why I tried to keep it to what generally in captive populations, what we have uniformly come together as the different species. Um, which again, we'll now get to my little last minute, I'll keep it short and quick, um, my little soapbox portion of the video, which is as even as a hobby, we can't decide what like all of these species of animals are. We can't figure it out. They're still infighting in different people. And I'm probably gonna make some rat snake people very offended just by the video that I put out today because I said one thing was something and not something else. Um, and that's really scary because with this new competes act that's going through Congress, which probably won't get passed, but if it does, it will essentially make a black white list or a good bad. And at any point in time, they can just take a species and say, that's now a bad one. It can't be transported across state lines and it will create a bottleneck. Eventually the species will stop being, will stop being able to be kept in captivity in the United States. And when we, as a, hobby people who know it and research it and like it can't figure it out what happens when a random person in a desk that's never even seen the animal in person can decide and say yep this one's bad now because theoretically for whatever reason that they don't have to give a reason for and then we could potentially lose a whole bunch of animals in the hobby because they said it's this and they just grouped them all together as one as Again, like they could say, okay, black rat snakes, then Westerns could go, MRI could go, yellows could go, all of that could go because of that. So if you guys are worried about that, if it was a little bit scary or worrisome or something to think about, go check out US ARC. That's the United Association of, uh, the United, <laughs> uh, United States Association of Reptile Keepers. They are a group that is, you know, made up of people who care about the reptile hobby and, you know, animals in general who have gone to bat for us on the state, county, city, and federal levels for our ability to keep these guys legally and responsibly. They are our benefactors. They are our advocates. Please, if you can, I have a link to them at the bottom of this and every other YouTube video that I make. Go click on the link. Go check them out. See all the things that they've done. 
things that they're putting out there, the great, amazing information that they're doing. Um, go check out their YouTube because they're gonna have a YouTube by the time this video comes out. Um, go check them out. And if you can, I, I know things are hard right now. A lot of people are strung out. If you can, please try to support them. They need all the support they can get. And I absolutely advocate for that as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry for that little soapbox. I need to do it as often as I can because I feel it's my responsibility as small of an audience as I have to spread that as well. If you guys enjoyed the video, um, hopefully I didn't make too many people upset. I didn't tongue tie and stutter nearly as much as I thought I was going to. Um, not nearly as many retakes as I thought I was going to, honestly. So, woo! But hopefully you enjoyed the video. You know, maybe you heard about a couple different species that you've never heard of. Um, I've done one on the Texas and Western. I've done one on the sub uh, on the Trans-Pecos rat snakes. If you want to go check out those two videos, if you want to know more about them, or if you want to know more about other rat snake species that I talked about in this or other ones in general, go check out the species spotlight playlist where I do, I think at this point, close to 30 species in there at this point, as well as I will be doing other ones in the future. Hopefully you guys are having a great day and we will check you next time.